group of people are bad, that means their religion is bad. You have to give the example, brother. That suppose if I have to analyze a car, suppose there is a good Mercedes car, and if I have to know how good the car is, and suppose there is a person who sits on who sits on the steering wheel who does not know to drive the car, and he bangs up the car. So will you say the car is not a good car, brother? Will you say? No. You will say the driver is bad, not the car. The driver does not know how to drive the car. You will not blame the car. To know how good a car is, you will look at the catalog. What is the speed? What is the average? What facilities it has? What is the pickup, etc. And then check it with the person who can properly drive the car. So if you have to look at an example of any Muslim, the best example is our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So you have to preach about Islam, not what Muslims do. That's important. So when you compare different faith, compare Christianity with Islam, not Christian with Muslim. Compare Hinduism with Islam, not Hindus with Muslim. That's a very important point, brother. So we not theoretically. Not theoretically. Practically, if you want to compare, compare the best Hindu with the best Muslim. Compare the best Christian with the best Muslim. No problem. Alan Masalan. Don't compare with the best Christian with the worst Muslim. Because there are black sheep in every community. Islam says that you should not have alcohol. Alhamdulillah, we Muslims are the biggest community of teetotalers in the world. We give the maximum charity. But there are some of our brothers who can drink the Christian under the table. You know that? They can. So if you have to give an example, take as a whole. In hygiene, we are the best as a whole. Don't point out the few Muslims only. As a whole, we are the best. In charity, we are number one. We are number one as a whole. As a whole. Alhamdulillah. As a whole society, the Muslim Ummah, we are the Kuntum Khaira Ummatin. We are the torch bearers. But the thing is that our law, our Sharia, does not go down their throat. It gets stuck somewhere. So we have to put the medicine to put sense into them, brother. If you reason with them, for example, the question, why polygamy is allowed? If you read, if you hear the answer, they are dumbfounded. Why hijab is compulsory? You tell the answer, they are dumbfounded. They have no reply. With all their science and technology, brother, they cannot argue with you. Why folk is haram? They can't argue with you. Why alcohol is haram? They can't argue with you. With all the technology, with, with all the sobriety, with all the piety, they are dumbfounded. If you have the knowledge. So Islam is a complete way of life. Irrespective, irrespective of whatever we Muslims are, still, Alhamdulillah, we as a whole, we are the best community. Alhamdulillah. Hope that answers the question. Brother, Islam is I think we are approaching 12 o'clock. Now we will allow only two questions. Uh, one brother and then one written question from here. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mirza Ahtisham Ahmed. I have one uh, question. There are some muftis who say this dawa work is not totally compulsory. It's not 100% compulsory. It is just a for the kifaya like. For the Kifa, you know, any dead body is there, we have to pray Salah. Mm -hmm. If uh, whole locality will be punished if no one prays. If, even if a man prays, single man, it will be accepted from him. And uh, what the muftis give reasoning for telling that this is a for the Kifaya is uh, they say, there is famous hadith which says there are five things obligatory in Islam. Number one is Tawheed, number two Salah, Zakat, Hajj, and uh, so, similarly, what they say second in that is uh, Islam is a uh, religion of reasoning, it's a religion of ease, it's a religion of convenience, it's a religion of fitra. fitra. So it's not totally compulsory on everyone. If, even if some people do it, it's enough. And what they say is, that's why Quran says, the ayat which you have said, means only there should be a group of people who should do the dawa work. And there are some other reasons also they get. So this is not very compulsory. It's not 100% compulsory. It's only uh, for the kifaya. That's what the some muftis give. Please answer. Well, there is a question that some of the people from the muftis say that dawa is for the kifaya. For the kifaya means somebody else does. Then it's not obligated on other people. And you give an example. That the janazi ki namaz, when someone expires, the salah that you pray after the person dies, 
If few people do it, it's not a fault on you. If someone gives a hand, the four people give the shoulder, the guy is a dead body. It's everyone else is relieved of that duty, even for sake of argument, brother. Even for sake of argument, for sake of argument, you agree. Not that I agree with them. For sake of argument, I agree with the mufti that doing dawa is for the kifaya. Are you sure that your neighbor will deliver the message, brother? Are you sure? What should have you gone to the non-Muslim and asked him, brother, did you get the message? Oh, you see the people, so you are sure that all the one billion people living in India have got the message. Are you sure? Locality. We are living in Bombay. There are 14 million people. In Bombay, 14 million people, wherever you are living. Are you sure? I want to know which Muslim is sure living in Bombay or which Muslim in India is sure that all the non-Muslim have got the message. Which Muslim? Can you get me one? Then I am not sure. If you say the Farid Kifaya, then it's your duty that when anyone dies, you know the four people have gone. You know it very well. Minimum four people have gone. So all the more you should be knocking at the door and ask them whether have you got the message or not. <laughs> Even if I agree with the Mufti. See, the way of Higma, Bhava, whatever the person says, if you can win the discussion by agreeing with his philosophy, that's the best. If the Christian says the Bible is the word of God, you agree for sake of argument and prove from the Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not God Almighty. That's Hikma. So if I agree with you also, it becomes your duty. First, a kefaya. First on you, that you go and knock at the door and ask them, whether did you get the message? And if on the day of judgment, if that person says, I did not get the message, no Muslim came, and there are hundreds of Muslims everywhere in the world who, have no, who do not know what the word Islam means, leave aside, what does it teach? If the non-Muslim goes to hell, brother, you will follow. Regarding the question of curse, if I agree with the Mufti, if you heard my talk, how can I, and they quote the verse of the Quran which I quoted, Surah al Imran, chapter 3, verse 104, let there arise out of you a group of people which enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. I agree, group of people. This is referring to full time dying. Are they following me one verse of the Quran? That is 104. What about verse 110? Kuntum khaira ummatin of Rijat Lidnar. Taq minuna bin maruki matan hauna al munkar. Matu minuna billa. Oh, we are the best of people. Is it referring to a group? No. It's referring to the whole Muslim community. Kuntum khaira ummatin. Oh, you are the best of people evolved for mankind. Taq minuna bil maruki watan hauna anil munkar. Enjoining what is good and forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah. Is this verse referring to a group of people, brother? No. That verse which you call it agree. It's talking about full time dying. What about Surah al Asad? Is it referring to a group of people? It says, while us in the insana fi that by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss. It is not saying that only a group of people to dawa is finished. The same thing, the wal asri innal insana, that's what the muftis and others say. The people do mistake by telling not truth. Okay, that means some people should do amal, some people no. should do faith, some no. people dawa, some people invite to truth. So you pray five times, I will not pray, I will do dawa. Because the, the, some people the extremes, they do the exaggeration in Islam. They, they do so that. The, I agree with Quran. The, says that, that's what it says. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter four, verse number one seventy one. La taqulu fi dinukum. Do not go to extreme. Yes. Did yes. I say you should go to extreme? No. That's what the meaning of the wal asri in al insana. The same mufti is what they say. See. Who are not in favor of. Uh, uh, See, you are saying same mufti, same mufti, same mufti. See, we have to follow the Quran, not the mufti. Agree. If you don't understand, you have to go for help. But yes. do you under, is there any difficulty in any verses of this Quran? See, if you don't understand, Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 59, that if you have a doubt of a particular thing, ask the person who has knowledge. Learn it first. Fine, learn it first. Do you have any doubt about Balas? Yes. It's simple Arabic. People out here should understand better than me. It's simple. Uh, there are so many tough things written on that. That's what they okay, say. One of, you, one of the reasons they say is... Okay, have you read the tough thing of Balas, sir? Yes. Most of the tafsir say, most of the, I don't know which mufti are talk, which mufti are talking about. No, it's uh, Adil Zalahi who has given the references of all the, some of the muftis, 
who are who disagree that it's not totally compulsory because he has given very good reasoning. The reasoning is so the very famous hadith which is Muttafaq which says there are five things only obligatory. What is talking is about?